اهلا وسهلا بحضراتكم كل متابعي تلفزيون يوم السابع في كل مكان في تغطيه حصريه اكون فيها مع حضراتكم انا هشام عبد التواب تم الاعلان عن دراسه جديده في جامعه لوفل بالولايات المتحده الامريكيه الدراسه اللي شكلت حدث علمي كبير ونجح فيها العلماء ان هم يسجلوا لاول مره على الاطلاق نشاط دماغ بشري لشخص بيحتضر وقدر يعني من خلالها يتوصل العلماء والباحثون الى ان الانسان بيستعرض اهم اللحظات اللي مرت عليه طول حياته خلال اللحظات الأخيرة وتحديدا في وقت الاحتضار تتحيا أنه من وقت ما تم الإعلان عن الدراسة بدأ زميلنا رامي نوار في البحث عن الدكتور أجمل زمار جراح الأعصاب بجامعة لوفل بالولايات المتحدة الأمريكية وهو صاحب الدراسة الأولى من نوعها عشان بالتأكيد نجري معاه أول حوار في وسائل الإعلام العربية ويحكي لنا التفاصيل احنا معاكم من هنا من تلفزيون يوم السابع بننفرد بهذا اللقاء الحصري مع الدكتور اجمل زمار صاحب الانجاز العلمي الكبير وهو اللقاء الاول لي في وسائل الاعلام العربيه والمصريه. Thank you so much Dr. Zomer for being with us. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. We would like uh, you Dr. Zomer to tell us more about yourself and what exactly inspired you to work on this study. Uh, so I more about myself i'm i, I was i'm originally from afghanistan i mm -hmm. uh, grew up in germany now i'm in the united states working as a neurosurgeon here mm -hmm. uh, what inspired us to do the work it was very accidental we had a patient who was sent to us with a bleeding between the skull and the brain that we call a subdural hematoma mm -hmm. so we went to operate on the on the patient remove the blood clot and uh, the patient was doing well three days afterwards he started having seizures uh, while he had the seizures we uh, placed an electroencephalogram a so-called eeg mm -hmm. onto the brain to detect the seizures to treat them and until here everything is done very standard medical treatment like everywhere else you would do and so what the things that become special is while we did the eeg the patient died so now we had the first ever recording from a human, human brain from alive to death. And that allowed us to look into the brain and see what it does in that time. Can you please describe more uh, information about this uh, recording? What happened exactly? Yes, so in a time when you and I or any other healthy human being uh, dreams, meditates, Uh, focuses, concentrates, remembers things as a certain pattern of brain waves that we're calling oscillations. Mm -hmm. They are increasingly active in a specific pattern in the brain. Um, we see the exact same pattern in the brain of the patient that passed away mm -hmm. in the seconds before he passed away and also after uh, 30 seconds after the heart stopped pumping bl blood into the brain. Mm -hmm. So that was very interesting and um, it makes us think uh, that perhaps this is a, a way for the brain to uh, recall memories of life in the last seconds before we die. So in order to fully understand this study, what are the main results of the study? Uh, the main results are one, uh, there's a correlation between the signals that are happening just before we die mm -hmm. with signals that are happening in our brain when we recall memories, uh, when we dream, when we meditate. So that correlation uh, makes us think that perhaps in the last seconds before we die, we have a me memory of um, a recall of life. Mm -hmm. uh, The second uh, interesting finding is that the brain activity continues after the heart stops pumping blood into the brain for a few seconds. So that opens the question is when are we really dead? Are we dead when the heart stops pumping brain or are we dead when the brain stops working? And um, should we uh, attach EEGs to patients' brains standardly uh, instead of only EKGs in the hospitals? Um, so the, those are probably the two main uh, takeaway messages from the study. So what is the main value of the study in terms of how to build on its results? You have talked about uh, the results. 
uh, that you have reached and helping humanity? How can you use the signals that you can find before any human can die? I think one thing to very uh, one thing is very important to consider is that uh, we only have the case of one patient, and uh, mm -hmm. as a scientist, a case of one is very thin eyes to make any big conclusions on. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, there is these correlations that I mentioned earlier. There's also correlation to animal studies that had been done prior to the study, and they show some s similar findings. Um, what can we build on this? Uh, the one thing is it's always interesting to mankind and humanity the near death phase is a mystical period of life we all mm -hmm. want to know what's happening in the brain when we're just about to die mm -hmm. are we really having a recall of memory patients who have been in near death experience they mm -hmm. report these things they sort of say that they've had a flashback of memory so we may be able to show with our research that we have a neurophysiological correlate that that could explain that what the brain does to get these memories and flashbacks. Um, what so can you? The question now is: uh, Can you can you uh, translate these signals into something meaningful that you can read that you can understand? Uh, for us as a scientist, they're very meaningful. Yes, so they mean that we are probably replaying. Uh, memories and we were playing uh, thoughts with dreaming uh, just before we die the question is uh, again can you uh, know anything about the memories that uh, the, the, the 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 person who died had it is impossible to know I think if mm -hmm. uh, it, with any measurement anything that we can measure uh, mm -hmm. We only know that these brain waves are happening, but whether you remember one thing and I remember the other, it's not mm -hmm. going to be any different in the signals that we measure to say what exactly is this person memorizing at this moment. It's impossible. And maybe rightfully so, because if we were able as scientists to look into somebody's brain with this detail mm -hmm. to know what they memorize, mm -hmm. we would lose a lot of privacy. Yes. Yes, and that's a big issue, by the way. Correct. So I think it's a good thing that scientists do not have that power. Mm. So how did you choose your uh, patients who were included in the study? It is just one patient, not mm -hmm. many. And uh, the, uh, we didn't choose, uh, we didn't plan a study. It was just by accident. Mm -hmm. The patient had a bleed, came to us. We removed the, bleed, the uh, hemorrhage and then the patient ceased. Mm -hmm. It was totally by chance. Yes. Can you finally uh, tell me more about the team uh, who worked with you? Yes. So there are three main uh, people who uh, did this. One is Raul Vicente, mm. a professor from Estonia, computational neuroscientist, a very good friend of mine. So we've done this together. And the other is Michael Rizzuto, who is in Vancouver, Canada, who also has been... Um, working a lot with us on this. So the three of us have done the main uh, portion. And then there's many other authors that have given the inputs and help to the study. The names are on the publication. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ajmal Zamar. Thank you for being with us. And thank you for all the information you give. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. بنشكر بتأكيد الدكتور أجمل زمار جراح الأعصاب بجامعة لوفل بالولايات المتحدة الأمريكية وصاحب الإنجاز العلمي الكبير كان معنا في لقاء حصري على تلفزيون اليوم السابع. بتأكيد كمان بنشكر زميلنا رامي نوار على فكرة وإعداد اللقاء والحقيقة هو لا يتوقف عن الانفرادات وبالتأكيد بنوعدكم بانفرادات قصرية وجديدة دائما. بشكركم شكرا جزيلا مرة تانية كنت معكم هشام عبد التواب وإلى اللقاء.